Hello and welcome to a new reading vlog. I've decided to do more reading vlogs because I thought you'd like an insight into my bookish life. I do lead a very bookish existence. I love reading as I'm sure you all know. I read lots of classics and I haven't read as many classics as I would like to this year so I thought I could document that in these upcoming vlogs trying to get back into reading classics. Classics. I am an author so I do lots of writing. Um, I am currently writing a historical children's book about the suffragettes which I am halfway through as of this morning and when I'm not reading or writing I am a history student which also involves lots of reading and does intersect very nicely with my love of classics because classics, history, that's why I love reading classics for the history. So I am all about the books as I'm sure you already know if you've been here for a while. So I thought I would do more reading vlogs maybe every week, every week and a half, every fortnight. I'm hoping that there will be lots of vlogs and like I said I haven't read as many classics as I wanted to this year. So this is my getting back into classics vlog because with the pandemic I wanted to read lighter books that don't take me as much time, don't take as much thinking because there's been a lot on my mind and whilst things aren't obviously perfect we still are living right in the middle of a pandemic. I'm trying to develop a better reading routine, I've been spending too much time on my phone and the screen time statistics do scare me slightly so I'd like to read more, I'd like to use those parts of my brain that I haven't been using when I haven't been reading classics and I've got some good reading planned for this summer as well as some other super exciting life stuff planned for this summer which I don't want to share now because I don't want to jinx it but I've got some really exciting stuff coming up that I think it will be lovely to share and for you to see in these vlogs and for me to document. So let's talk about what I am currently reading, a book I'm really excited to talk about. This is Torn Sails by Alan Rain, which you might have seen me feature in my summer TBR video, which was my last video that I posted. This was published in the 1890s and Alan Rain was a Welsh author. Her books are mostly all set in Ceredigion on the West Wales coast, which coincidentally is where my family is from. So I have so many happy memories in many of the places that this book is set or the places that the settings are based on. So it feels so lovely to be reading her books and despite the fact that nobody has hardly heard of her anymore, she's incredibly niche. She is amazing and she sold over two million copies in her lifetime and she died in 1908 and that is incredible seeing as though she isn't talked about anymore and isn't even in print. So many of her books have gone out of print. So if you'd like to read this I will leave a link in the description to the archive.org link where you can download it onto your kindle or onto your phone which is how I read a lot of books that are now out of print or you can scour places like ebay or abe books which is where I got this lovely copy because she's not in print. It's a crying shame and I want to change that because she really does deserve to be read. Torn Sails is set in a fictional coastal community, a very close-knit community and the main character is a girl of 18 who is an incredible beauty called Gladys. She is secretly in love with a man who is just a few years older than her called Ivor. He also is in love with her but they haven't shared their love and both kind of think well he doesn't love me she doesn't love me so they keep it a secret <laughs> until Gladys is proposed to by the master the man who uh, runs a lot of the employment and owns a lot of the cottages in this community he is the central figure in the community and so she doesn't feel like she can turn down his proposal because of who he is because she doesn't think her love is reciprocated 
and then she's just in too deep and that's about as far as I've got and that's basically the plot of the book. I love her descriptions of the settings, they're incredibly evocative and just remind me and make me feel like I'm at home in this very strange sort of way. Alan Rain's writing coincides with a huge Celtic revival that happened at the end of the 19th century into the 20th century so there really was a movement to encourage and to talk about traditions that had been happening in Ireland, in Wales, in Scotland. So you might have heard of the Irish literary revival with poets such as W.B. Yeats and there were other movements within that too, not just literary but art, poetry, novels, plays. It was all about encouraging Celtic culture in each of the nations. And Alan Rain, whose real name was Anne Adeliza Puddicombe, really led this in English language Welsh writing. So she's writing in the English language but her books are about Welsh life, what it was like to be Welsh at this time and what it was like to live in Welsh communities. And whilst at times they are highly romanticised, the plots are a bit like I'm not sure if that's entirely believable or this is a bit strange. I love her writing and I am loving this so much. So I am currently on chapter 7, 137 pages in. I am going to be reading some of this this afternoon and I wanted to document my time reading this because I really do feel like it has made me realise why I love reading classics so much and made me feel really enthusiastic about all these classics that I want to read in the next few weeks up until the end of summer. So, so far this morning I have finished editing a chapter of my book. So I'm now halfway through which is an amazing feeling. I'm going to do more writing later but because I've come to the end of the chapter I thought I'd have a bit of a reading break because I find that reading other books really helps me with my own writing to think about the way that people write and whilst I'm not stealing ideas or concepts or plots in any way, I just find that reading breaks it up and makes me think about how I approach my own writing. So I really hope you will enjoy my bookish vlogs and I hope in turn that I will enjoy the experience of reading alongside you. I really want to get better at reading more classics because even though I talk about classics on my channel, I've read lots of them now, you still have points where you don't read as much, you don't feel as confident and I want to gain that confidence back because once I get out of the habit of reading classics it does take me a little bit to get back into reading them again um, and so yeah I think it's important to say like I don't always feel confident, I don't always feel like I understand everything that I'm reading. Sometimes it is really hard and I think, oh my gosh, why? <laughs> but I love it ultimately. Um, and so hoping that these vlogs will restore some of that confidence and love and that you will see that as you are watching these vlogs. So I'm going to do some reading now and I will update you once I have done some more and after that some more writing because here we are always reading or writing, <laughs> nothing else exists. So a little reading and writing update and I have written over a thousand words this morning and I have finished editing the chapter I wanted to edit and started on the next one which is really good. I've just taken a break for lunch and I have read lots more of Torn Sales. So I'm now on chapter 11 page 223 and I'm wondering if I might be able to finish this today. I didn't think I was going to finish it today but now I'm thinking that I probably could because I've got about 120 pages left to go. So I think the plan now is to do a little bit more writing up to the point where I have finished the first half of 
the chapter I'm working on so then I can do the other half tomorrow or something or maybe I'll get it done today and then I'm gonna spend the rest of the evening reading Torn Sails. It's taken a very interesting twist. There is some suggestion of witchcraft involved um, with a character called Gwen, who's very much been painted as her versus everybody else. This really is a book of contrast where you have um, a character like our main character Gladys versus Gwen who is this witchy type character who is said to be almost have something evil in her because of her associations with witchcraft and I'm at a point in the book where it's like I think things are going to take the turn a turn for the worst from here on out. Some very interesting discussion of uh, traditions around death in communities at this time in this area and how um, if somebody died the rituals that people would go through as a community to honour that person. There's also a lot of contrast between the Welsh and the English in this book. I think probably more so than the previous book of hers I read which was by Bowen Banks. This one seems to take that a bit more seriously of like we are Welsh and the English are doing everything wrong, <laughs> which I kind of like. I think that's quite a good thing to read about. Um, I think it's a very interesting dynamic going on. There aren't any English characters as such, but the English are mentioned quite a lot. And I am not one of these people who's like, England is superior. I find it quite funny. So um, that's really uh, interesting to read about. I feel like the thing to remember with this book is that it's not perfect. I think there is a reason that her books have kind of been forgotten but I still love them in spite of that and I'm really enjoying this. I can't put it down. I've read it so quickly because I think because of the descriptions, because there's so much in there that interests me and to find out more, I want to find out more about the way of living um, because I love social history so much. It's why I love reading classics, to find out how people in the past lived. And I've read, you know, for example, the Brontes, Elizabeth Gaskell, they're set in a very similar area where this is very different to anything else I've read before. She's saying something very unique um, for the time and now, you know, Welsh literature now still isn't a huge thing. So to read something like this, I'm not learning so much from it but also enjoying myself at the same time so that is brilliant. So I think I'm going to finish it and then I will give my full thoughts and then I'll choose something else to read. I'm not sure what else I'm going to read. Maybe we can look through all my bookcases and see what classic I should read next. I'm not sure. I think probably something Victorian or maybe a bit later. I'm quite excited now because I didn't think I was going to finish this this quickly. I thought it would be over the weekend. So actually, the writing start is so easy to read that it hasn't taken me long at all, which has surprised me. Um, so I think we might get another classic in, which is really nice. I'm going to have a think about what to read and then I'm going to show you some of my options, I think. But first, a little bit more work because I've still got some work to do. Since I got my vaccine two weeks ago today, I have still felt quite tired so my work has been a lot so and there's been days where it's like oh but I finally feel at a point where I'm I don't feel so affected by it it did take me a while it was absolutely fine I had hardly any side effects it was like absolutely 100% worth it and I'm gonna get my second one when I'm allowed to and able to it's already booked in but it did leave me feeling a bit like very tired at points um i was reading something like last week or the other day and i just wanted to fall asleep straight afterwards which never happens <laughs> so it's just left me feeling quite tired which is a good thing because it means my body is responding and that's fine by me but um yeah i um it's nice to have a day today where i'm like yeah not even productive because i don't really get the whole you've got to be super productive and it stresses me out a lot to feel like productivity all the time but it's nice to have a day where I'm getting all the things I want to do done and enjoying it at the same time like I've written the bits I wanted to write I have done a bit more and I will do more now than I was aiming to do today I think I'm going to finish a book today so all is good 
all is well with the world well not really but all is well with my world in my little attic room so that's all good i'm happy with that <laughs> I finished, which I am really happy with. I did not expect to finish this today, but I kind of got sucked into it and couldn't not finish it, which was amazing. I'm so happy with that. And I really loved this. I loved it so much more. I don't know, I kind of expected to love it, but I'd forgotten just how much I love her writing and her stories and her books so that was a lovely surprise. The ending was kind of bittersweet, very dramatic in places, definitely over dramatic in places, it was like you didn't really need to go there. I would say if you'd like to read this do be careful because it's not a huge plot point, it's not a spoiler, but part of one character's development is about baby loss and it's seen in not a negative way, it's seen as obviously a very emotional thing, but the way that her behaviour changes after it is seen as a very negative thing and I felt a bit meh about that and how it was done. I think if it was done like that today, I would have more of an issue with it but we shouldn't let authors from the past off but attitudes were different and I think we need to take that into account so if that is something that you don't want to read about then this is your warning because in places I felt a bit uncomfortable with it and the way that it was done it was just a bit like mm, not really sure about this but okay fair enough so just be warned about that. Um, I would say I kind of saw how it was going to end because it's like there's only so many ways that this can end and there's going to be a happy-ish ending but actually I felt like quite emotional at the end because everything came together which is really nice to read books like that um, and the settings are so beautiful they are my absolute favourite things there was in this last half some really beautiful writing that just even though it's really warm here today, as you can tell, my face is slightly shiny. I felt like I was on top of the cliffs looking out at sea with the sea breeze uh, going through my hair and that is incredible. I wanted to be able to write like that and I felt kind of jealous <laughs> reading it. So I loved this. I have put it into my reading diary. It is my 49th book of the year. It is my fifth classic which by this time last year or and certainly by this time two years ago I had read so many more classics but I'm trying not to feel bad about that because some people would love to read five classics. I'm sure there's some of you who've read fewer and I'm just annoyed because I think I put too much pressure on myself to read classics because I feel like with the classics community I haven't put my all into that this year because I've had university, because of the pandemic, because of all that stuff and so it does frustrate me slightly but that's the point of this. This reading vlog and all these future reading vlogs it's all about me just enjoying it, just enjoying the ride, enjoying the process of reading, enjoying the books that I'm reading and actually I've really enjoyed today because of that and I've done loads of work and I've done loads of reading and that makes me happy. Um, so I am really pleased that I read this. I started it not yesterday, well I, I mainly started it yesterday um, and slightly the evening before and so I read it so quickly because um, I just couldn't put it down. I just wanted to know what was going to happen. I just wanted to find out more and more about the community and their traditions and I really loved that about it. So I would really recommend reading it. I loved this. I loved her previous book that I read by Berwyn Banks. I think she is an incredible writer. Please read her if you haven't already. Also I don't track what I read on Goodreads anymore but I do track the classics I read so that's where you can see uh, what classics I have been reading and I finally got to add another one which was quite satisfying. Also another thing that I do with books that I read like this where there's not a lot of information about them, nobody's really talking about them, 
there literally are no reviews on Goodreads for this book. I think two people have rated it, well three now including me, so nobody's ever reviewed it. So what I tend to do is to write a review and write some notes on the book because if I need to come back to it and remember it and don't want to read the whole thing there's no information I can find about it anywhere. Not very easily accessed information anyway so I will probably after this just write a bit about it, write about who the characters are, about the plot, how I would describe it, my feelings towards it because there's no other information on it so I'll probably add that to Goodreads as well to be honest because it's nice to have as much information and so other people can access that as well and access your thoughts so you know that it's a real book, it actually exists and you haven't just imagined it which I kind of like it actually, it's like you've discovered buried treasure, you know somebody's put it there, you know people have seen it before in the past, but you've discovered it again for the first time and I really love that feeling, especially on Goodreads, like nobody has reviewed it so I'm gonna be the first which is exciting. So now I've got to decide what I'm going to read next, not really sure what I'm in the mood for so I think I'm going to show you some of my options and then I'm going to go away and just sit on it for a bit, think about my enthusiasm for each of the books that I think I might want to read because I've done a lot of reading today and if I do any more straight away now my brain is going to get very overwhelmed and my brain kind of feels like something that some kind of material you know like that jelly stuff where you like slime remember then that was a thing like when you pull that apart and just stretch it until it breaks that's what my brain feels like when I've used it too much and I did writing and lots of reading today so it's worked a very specific part of my brain so I'll show you what I think my options are next I'm gonna go to this shelf this is my female writer's shelf it's actually very messy and things aren't where they should be but i basically got here odd bits of like um 18th century writing and early 19th century writing and some biographies and just random stuff that i chucked there because there's not as many of those then i've got a few that shouldn't be here like Deerbrook should be here but I'm running out of space so I need to rethink it really. I've got 20th century writers like Agatha Christie, uh, Sylvia Plath, Stella Gibbons and then on this side here we have some Victorian authors um, which I go to quite a lot so we've got some George Eliot which I'm certainly not in the mood for, <laughs> I've got to be in a very specific mood for George Eliot, uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, loads of Elizabeth Gaskell here, I'd quite like to read some letters of Elizabeth Gaskell but I probably want to read a novel next. Saving some of these for later on, like I'd like to read some George Edgerton later on, um, but not now. So one of my options is East Lynn. I've already started reading this, but this edition is kind of annoying, like I don't love the way the text is formatted, so I have been reading this on my phone and the problem is I can't read on my phone too much because I gave myself eye strain <laughs> because I was reading too much on my phone. So that is an option but I think I might take my time on that. So that's one book I quite like to read. Kind of tempted by Deerbrook as well but I'm not sure if I will finish it. I'm really not sure about that one. It is, it's an option. And I'd quite like to read it soon. It's the kind of thing I'm certainly in the mood for. It's very Victorian, uh, even though it was published right at the beginning of Victoria's reign. To me it just screams Victorian social novel and so I am very tempted by that. Then from elsewhere on my shelves I've also got Summer by Edith Wharton, which is one I've been wanting to read for ages very hot today, it's certainly hot up here in my greenhouse of an attic so might be fitting although I'm not really sure if I want Edith Wharton to break my heart not sure if that's the kind of mood I'm in for but it's an option it's quite a short one as well um so when I'm doing things in between that's not too bad but and I was trying to find where this book was and I couldn't find it anywhere finally found it but in my quest to find out where it was, I was like, I want to read it, I want to read it. So I've been meaning to read it for ages. You know I've been meaning to read it for ages. I've talked about wanting to read it for ages. This is The Posthumous Memoirs of Brass Cubas by Machado de Assis. Uh, I really want to read this actually. So I'm going to sit on it. 
I might read this and then I could always put in another Victorian classic afterwards but this is a Brazilian classic I've read about 43 pages but I'm gonna go back to the start and start again and the bits I read I loved so much this book is hilarious so I think I might read this one this certainly is tempting me and I couldn't find it and I was in a panic that I'd somehow got rid of it or it had gone or I put it somewhere and I was looking everywhere and that kind of made me think well probably you do want to read it then if you were looking for it that much so I think I might read this one this is a new translation and it has been translated by Flora Thompson DeVoe and apparently this translation is amazing it's one of the best translations into English that you can read so I am feeling very hopeful about this one really excited to read it and I will talk more about it I don't think I'm going to talk about it the same like again this is a confidence thing but when I'm reading a Victorian classic I have lots of background information that I have done over the years and lots of other books to compare it to so bear with me if I'm talking about it because I don't have that knowledge it's very much my starting place with Brazilian literature and Brazilian classics and I'm sure there's lots of you who will be very supportive and will be telling me lots of information so I'm relying on you to do that and to tell me where I'm going wrong or tell me where I'm going right because I kind of just want to read it and enjoy it just like when I first started reading classics I don't want to overanalyze it I don't want to think too hard about it I just want to enjoy it because I find if you do that you go in and enjoy it first when you come to read other things or when you come to reread it again you feel so much more positive about that experience you have more confidence and I don't know why my confidence has been so knocked like I haven't read as many classics and I don't feel as confident in it and that's kind of frustrating so I think I might enjoy this I think I'm gonna read it and just just enjoy it I think that is the main thing so let me know in the comments if you've read it because I know lots of you have and lots of you are really enthusiastic about it and that does make me even more excited so yeah I think I might read this I, I'm really looking forward to this now Victorian classics again I read them probably afterwards I probably will read East Lynn on my phone but I'm gonna have to take my time with that so this one first I can't wait My weekend reading is so good that I'm kind of jealous of myself. I'm not gonna lie. I am reading some... I mean, I couldn't have chosen better. I'm so happy. So I decided that I would read the posthumous memoirs of Brass Cubas. I am currently 131 pages in and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to finish this today but I'm definitely going to finish it this weekend and oh I started it last night and I'm like why didn't I read this sooner when you were all telling me to read it why didn't I read it then why <laughs> it's so good I almost feel like this book is too good for me I feel like I'm not a good enough reader for it it's just a work of genius and I know why so many of you love it so much wow I don't know where to start but let's start at the beginning. So, started reading it and immediately I was struck by the voice. This book is about a man who is dead. He is literally writing it, his memoirs, from the grave and talking about the events of his life and also the events that lead up to his death. The chapters are really short so it's super pacey and he is hilarious whether he means to or not it's got this very dry sense of humor which i really like i also feel like it answers some really philosophical questions and makes you think in the process mainly because he's dead he's talking about his life and also his death um, and talking about sometimes very insignificant moments in his life that actually mean something so it makes you think about your own life what would you do if you were in this position writing this book when you were dead? What moments would you choose from your own life? It reminds me a lot of Laurence Stern's Tristram Shandy, which 
is something that the author is certainly aware of. It's something that he references. It's not an imitation in any way. It's doing its own thing. Um, and one thing that has really struck me is that I feel like this could have been written yesterday. Obviously there are things that are mentioned in the book and the culture and things from the time that don't happen today and have changed. But in terms of the characters and their emotions and the way that they live, it feels like it was written today, yesterday. It feels so modern and so current and I love that about it. It's kind of disconcerting at points because I'm imagining the characters and my head is imagining them wearing jeans or something, <laughs> which I kind of need to stop. Um, but that's a good thing. That's a great thing that this has really stood the test of time. I do feel like it's a book that I'm going to read once and then I'm going to read again in the future and right now I'm enjoying the voice and the style and the form of the book and those are the things that are stealing my attention and when I read it again in the future I'm going to be a lot more aware of the subtleties of it um, and I will try to understand some of the more cultural points but I think I said earlier in the vlog yesterday when I thought I was going to read it, I'm not too worried about those things right now because the more I read, the more Brazilian literature I read, for example, the more I'm going to pick up on those things. So right now I've been enjoying reading the notes in the back of the book, um, but I'm also just trying to enjoy the story and I most definitely am. It's so quick. I was reading it yesterday, reading it last night and I couldn't put it down. I was thinking, my eyes are hurting because I've done a lot of reading today, but I can't stop reading this book. So I'm so happy that I picked this up and I know so many of you are going to be happy that I have too. I think it's amazing. And then I've also started reading another book, The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James. I read about 200 pages of this before, but this is a running theme in my life. I start books and I don't finish them despite the fact that I might be loving them. That's what I did with this one last year. It's also what I did with this one, but I'm also loving this. I want to finish both of these this time. So this will be first up on my list of books to finish. Then I'm going to try and finish The Portrait of a Lady. This is about an American heiress called Isabel Archer who comes to the UK to live with her aunt and cousins. That's the start of the novel. But it's all about a match that she makes. I think quite an unfortunate match in marriage. His writing reminds me very much of E.M. Forster's and Howard's End is one of my favourite books. Um, and I love that the opening line is this. <laughs> it just says, Under certain circumstances, there are few hours in life more agreeable than the hour dedicated to the ceremony known as afternoon tea. Which is very British, very quintessentially British. Henry James was an American author but he came over to live in the UK. This one was published in 1881 and this was also published in 1881 so I just realised that these are published in the same year and yet they are such different novels and actually it feels kind of fortuitous to, you can't really compare them both because they are so different but it does feel very interesting to read two books that were published in the same year and yet they're saying very different things the life that they're portraying is very different and whilst this very much feels like when i'm reading it i could be watching a period drama this just feels like i'm reading something that if it was written now it would be incredibly groundbreaking so if you haven't read this i mean it's so good so so good feel a bit though when I'm reading it like I do when I read Virginia Woolf in which I'm like this book is too clever for me there's so much going on here that I've missed this time so like I said I think I'm going to read it again in the future it's definitely a book I'll be going back to and once I've read this I'm definitely going to read another book of his that I own Dom Casmero which so many of you have also told me to read and so many of you commented on a video where I mentioned it being like you need to read this book because you need to answer the question did 
she cheat on him or not and I don't know what that means yet but I'm determined to find out so definitely won't be the last book of his that I read. I'm gonna try and finish it um, either tonight or tomorrow morning so you'll hear my thoughts once I have finished it but wow I mean I really am jealous of my own reading right now. I've chosen two really great books to read. This one is slightly longer but I'm I'm on a roll with the classics and so whilst I'm on a roll I'm gonna roll with it <laughs> so I'm gonna try and finish both of these I don't know if you'll see this in this vlog because it is longer but certainly you will see me finishing the posthumous memoirs of Brascubas in this vlog because I want to talk to you about it once I have finished it but for now I'm loving it and that is an amazing amazing thing. I have finished reading The Posthumous Memoirs of Bras Cubas by Machado de Assis. Oh my gosh I finished it. I'm so pleased because I loved it so much and I feel like all the same thoughts I had yesterday remain. I finished reading it this morning and one of the things I did find a bit weird was that I got to the last page, turned the page expecting to find more and then that was it. <laughs> so I feel like the beginning of the book actually talks a lot about how the book ends. So I feel like I need to go back and read it now just to kind of tie that up. That was probably my only slight issue with it. It was like I turned the page being like let's keep going and I was like oh there's nothing left <laughs> it's done it was kind of an abrupt ending and I can't say I loved the ending quite as much but I also feel like maybe that's because of my age you know I related more to him I'm not sure relate is the right word but I understood him and his life more when he was younger because I can see those experiences or understand those feelings slightly more when he was a 50 year old man which I will never know what it it feels to, to be like um and I kind of I know I've seen some people say that they didn't like the love story and I don't think that this book is a love story by any means but I actually really liked those elements and I liked the way that it was described I didn't think the love interest or love interest as such I thought she was a really well written character you could really understand her motivations you could understand her character and, and why the, she was the way that she was and I really appreciated that it can be kind of hit or miss when you're reading about female characters written around this time but again like I said when I was reading it yesterday this book feels so modern I can't believe it was written in 1881 it feels like it could have been written now other than a few of the references to things like slavery and to things like the technology and the vehicles and just some of the things that the characters were doing but I can't really comment on the language because this is in translation but I will say that the translation was excellent I obviously haven't read the original but the way that this was done I thought was very clever and I also really understood um, because of the notes and the introduction in the book why things were translated the way they were and in some parts the translator also compares different translations and why she has made the decisions she's made so I feel like I can really trust this translation of the book. Really the best thing about this book is the narrative voice which is very self-aware um, so you have our main character Brascubas talking about things and he's just very aware of how he's doing things and everything is for effect and so I don't really know what Machado Jesse's voice is like at this point because the voice of our narrator is so strong that it just feels wholly him so I'm looking forward to reading some other books of his so that I can really find out more about his style because I don't really know what his style is based off of this book because it didn't really feel like there was an author writing it it literally did feel like a man had died and was writing this from the grave that was how good it was the thing that really disappoints me about this is not a disappointment at all because I've read it but what disappoints me is that 
unless people had recommended this to me on booktube unless i'd had so many lovely brazilian followers telling me that i needed to read this book i wouldn't have heard about it and so the thing that annoys me is i think as english readers we have a tendency and obviously this isn't every reader but i do feel like we have a tendency to just ignore anything that's not written in english we it's like when we go to foreign countries and expect everybody to speak English. Well, not everybody does speak English. We think of ourselves as supreme gods and obviously we're not. We're just like everybody else. So I feel like we don't pick up translated books as much and we expect other people to read our literature but we don't really seek out other books and so this has made me realise I really need to change that. I don't want to fall into those habits just to feel like I need to read English books because there are thousands of other books out there written from all around the world that are just as good if not better. This is an absolute masterpiece and even though I didn't enjoy every single part of it, particularly the ending, I just didn't think it was good as the beginning I still learned so much from it and as a reader I love it and as a writer it frustrates me because I can't see how he did it I want to pull it apart to learn from it to learn from the writing style and the form but that's going to be a challenge because it felt effortless there was a section that I saved actually which um I put a little mark in so that I could go back to it. And I think this demonstrates the self-awareness of the narrator's voice. This is a chapter called The Flaw in the Book and it just says, I am beginning to regret that I ever took to writing this book. Not that it tires me, I have nothing else to do and dispatching a few meagre chapters into the other world is invariably a bit of a distraction from eternity. But the book is tedious, it reeks of the grave, it bears a cadaveric grimace. This is a grave defect and yet a minor one on the whole. For this book's greatest flaw is you, reader. I love the direct address, the way that the narration engages with the reader and acknowledges that there is somebody reading this and that actually this book is flawed. I don't really think it's flawed, I think it's flawless. But that's what the voice is like and it's kind of endearing you don't always love the main character i don't relate to him very much but i still kind of loved him i still wanted to read more and more and more because he's such a fascinating character and whilst i didn't understand everything i think i said yesterday i'm gonna go back to it and reread it and um, because i think i would take a lot more from it again when i read it which is a very good thing but I did like how even if there were bits I didn't understand there were other bits that just shone through. There are quite a few chapters where he just stops his narration and goes actually that last chapter it was a load of nonsense <laughs> which I think was hilarious. It's a very dark humour, very subtle in places and in other places you're like yeah you're trying to be funny here and I appreciate it. So I'm so so glad that I read this. So glad that I read it. I want to read definitely more from him. I'm going to read Dom Casmero next I think which is very exciting. I'm looking forward to exploring that one and I really do feel like the more I go back to this the times when I reread it are the times when I'm going to appreciate it more and more and more and that's great. I love books like that where you can read them again and you know you're going to get something else out of it and this is a book I definitely think that will happen with. So thank you dear readers for recommending it to me. I'm so pleased that I read it because it was such an enjoyable reading experience, one of the best reading experiences I've had in a long time and I really am so grateful for your recommendations because like I said I probably wouldn't have heard of it or read it otherwise but you were all shouting at me, read the book, read the book read the book and I did and I loved it I've had such an amazing reading weekend I am next going to finish the portrait of a lady by Henry James I haven't read any more since I spoke about it yesterday but this is going to be one for next week's reading vlog so do check by to hear my thoughts on that I've really enjoyed filming this reading vlog. I hope you have enjoyed watching it. My reading vlogs aren't as polished as other people's. They're not 
even though I say it's more of a bookish life vlog, my life is just reading, so um, I feel like I'm not doing as much exciting stuff, but that's kind of how I like it. I just kind of want to talk about the books and leave it like that. You know, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. I'm not doing many exciting things. I'm trying to be cautious. I've got a very exciting week coming up, so that's good. Um, but I really feel like this weekend has made me love classics more than I have done in a long time. For like the pandemic has taken away bits of my personality and my interests and one of those things was classics when I just couldn't concentrate or focus on particular books or books that felt like a lot of work um, and I feel like I've changed a lot throughout the pandemic as well I feel like my relationship with myself has changed particularly during the lockdowns I feel like I've been a lot more self-conscious I feel like there have been parts of myself that have just really got on my nerves because I've been stuck in my head my relationship with myself has changed and maybe some ways for the better some things have definitely improved and other things have got worse again um which I think is natural I think that's happened for everyone so much of that has been like not wanting to be on camera because I can't stand looking at myself or editing myself or I think oh what are you on about like you're so inarticulate or you know I've just been very harsh on myself I think because I've had so much time just in my brain and so this weekend really has allowed me just to get back to what I love and I really do love it i've read six classics now this year now that i have read this um i've read two of those this weekend i'm gonna keep continuing on with my classics reading especially now it's raining as i'm sure you can hear so it's gonna be a reading and writing day again today and then once i've read a bit more once i've had a few days away i'll get back to filming another reading vlog and talk to you about some more classics which is very exciting do let me know in the comments what you think of any of the books i have read or what you are reading at the moment because i would love to know so thank you so much for watching this video and i'll see you soon for a new reading vlog happy reading